Well, good evening, race fans, and welcome to Azerbaijan for the Baku Grand Prix. Uh, brought to you by the Esports Masters League. This is the PSF2 League. My name is Webo here to take you through uh, tonight's um, tonight's coverage. And uh, joining me uh, for this uh, this first few moments, we have Cuguinho, uh, manager of the RS uh, RLS team. Uh, Cuguinho, uh, welcome. And um, uh, you are the team manager, are you not? Uh, I am. Can confirm. I'm delighted to to join you today for this quick chat. Hopefully it should be a good race. Baku always provides. Let's see well, well, how the next one and a half hours turn out. Absolutely, yeah. We 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 can't wait to get underway. But um, talk to me about first of all who uh, who you've got to represent in the team today. Uh, two great talents. One of them will be making his debut. I can't really call him a talent as <laughs> as he's a bit more experienced than say the, <laughs> the average in in the league racing scene. Can't wait for for him to show us what he can do. That's Marcus, formerly a part of ESRL, uh, now in, in orange colours. Um, I'm expecting a, a lot from our boys, especially in the race. They've got experienced heads on, on pretty young, well, young and old shoulders. Um, yeah, watch out for them in the race, especially. Uh, navigating the, the Barclay Street circuit. A lot of street smarts uh, needed, so, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, and uh, and so your your other driver tonight. How are how are you how are you preparing everybody, and how are they feeling going into the race? Uh, well, Baku is its own race very much. Um, it's a race of attrition. Um, that's that's pretty much how preparations have gone. Just know, making sure all the resource like every, the preparation has been put in place for for you know not to be too friendly with the walls not to push too much on worn tires there's there's a lot of tricks that this circuit can can provide like just just bring up um yeah we just wanted to cover all bases make sure we're prepared nothing's left up to chance and even if uh, a few more spanners should be thrown into into the mix say rain say safety cars uh, we should be uh, right up there knowing yeah, we, we've been in situations before where we know how to operate in these situations. Fantastic. So you are um, you're part of the Rising Lions team and you so far in the PSF2, we're, we're into the second half of the season officially now. We've just had our, our, our week break, although I imagine you didn't give yes. your drivers much of a break. But you've been in the top half of the league the whole time since the start of the season. And um, in recent weeks, you've actually climbed up to third. Uh, how are you kind of feeling of the, as the season so far and, and what are you kind of expecting? I know you've cut that lead down to just, um, well, let me just check on this one, down to just 15 points to the lead and only two points to second place uh, in the last race. So um, surely you're on an upward curve. Is this part of your expectations or are you feeling, um, what's your feeling over the over the progress so far this season? Uh, yeah, the trajectory is looking more than positive, more than more than promising, encouraging. Um, not just for us, but uh, I, I guess for the spectators as well. Given that there's a, a five-way title fight brewing, I uh, can't <laughs> wait to to see how. I mean, most uh, league racing enthusiasts won't even know what 2012 <laughs> real life F1 was like, where where there was an actual uh, five-way title fight. So, or 2010 was it? Oh, both of them, I guess, drivers more, than, more so than teams. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, happy to, to uh, be involved in it. Um, uh, RLS, or formerly TTG, as well as PGS, has a long-standing history in EML. We've been there since uh, EML has, has, you know, existed, really, uh, for the first time. So being in F2 this season, we really want to build up our... our developmental pace um, there's a lot of young guys really really keen to make their their uh, mark in this scene yep. we want to help them as much as we can um, and given yeah putting them into pressure situ situations such as the title fight can only help them so much more going forward um, and it'll help our uh, apologies <laughs> it'll help our f124 preparations massively um, so that's the mentality going into this uh, yeah, rotate the squad as much as possible. Yeah. Um, give them the the pressure situation, just just feeling and know how, and prepare them for for everything that's to come. That's great, and and I presume you've got this squad rotation going on. But but do you stay in the engineer seat for the whole season, or as much of it as you can to sort of be a steady hand on the till? 
Oh, it's, it's so tempting to just uh, write into the lineup change. I put my name in. I, I want to drive every race that I can <laughs> drive, but I know that uh, I've got responsibilities here as a manager to, to make yep. sure the drivers are looked after, that they can, uh, that they are thrown the opportunities you know they deserve um, to, to just pit themselves, measure themselves against good, healthy competition, which EML always provides. So um, yeah, God be the bigger man. Even though I'm <laughs> itching to get back into a racing seat, um, I'm enjoying my my time on the sidelines right now, along with uh, Benny. Um, we we both had more of a fair share of, of fun throughout the last few years in in e racing and, and before so even as well. So uh, happy to give the next generation, so to speak, uh, our, our wisdom, <laughs> our, our expertise. <laughs> I'm sure you're not quite ready for your pipe and slippers, though, and you, you, you can't wait to get back on, get back in into the action. But it's good that um, you're, you know, you've, they've got a racer with credentials behind them in their ear. Um, are you speaking to both drivers? Are you managing the whole race and distributing to each of them and com keeping communication going between them both? Uh, affirmative. Um, however, <laughs> my engineering style is, is very silent, so to speak. So I'll only okay. be, I'll, I'll be happy to let the boys uh, concentrate, focus on their. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Baku is a is a race you really do need 110% concentration yeah. for. So yeah. Anything they need to know, I'll be happy to to lend a helping hand because I'm not the one that's, you know, racing behind the wheel with 160 beats per minute heart. heart <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the one with all the info at hand. So, yeah. Um, I'll be doing all I can to, to help make sure that Rumbo and Marcus both finish as high up as possible. And um, hopefully, yeah, if there's no, um, if there's podium interviews, anything, or <laughs> maybe a next view, I'll be, I'll be seeing you again, a happy man. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we hope so. It's been great to talk to you. Uh, we, we wish you the best of luck, especially as you've given your time early on here. I know you're, you, you need to get um, in, in to, uh, into the uh, into the other party chat so you can organize yourself and, and make sure we, we need to actually get hold of Marcus as well because he's I don't see him in the lobby yet so we need to uh, crack the whip a little bit there <laughs> get him in, get him in um, but yeah. good luck tonight good luck for the season and it's uh, great of you and uh, very sporting of you to come and have a chat with us um, delighted to, to be able to join you thank you very much for the for the quick chat and yeah I wish you and, and all viewers at the moment just the most fun you could possibly have. Enjoy Tremendous. One and a half hours. Let's get Marcus in that lobby quickly. All right. Thanks a lot, then. Right. <laughs> Cuguinho, the <laughs> manager <laughs> of <laughs> manager of Rising Lions currently, and great to talk to him. So thank you to him for his time. Welcome, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't say hello uh, earlier on to Nordic Ninja and to Maze uh, for joining us there. And let me talk to you before we get underway into qualifying here at the ferocious Azerbaijan Baku circuit. Let me get into the current standings. Gave a little bit of a hint there about what, what the situation was earlier on but LDL Esports have seen their lead hacked to death uh, quite frankly um, in the uh, previous round uh, they still are in the lead with two wins four podiums on 162 points but they are now only five points ahead of Grand Track 10 who themselves have one win and five podiums on 157 points. Cuguinho's team, Rising Lions uh, Sport, uh, have two podiums to their name, but 149 points, 13 off the lead, and only two clear of Extra Steer, who are in fourth place with one win and two podiums. Team G-Force have a win and two podiums as well. They are on 140. As Cuguinho said, a five-way battle right now, cooking bet for uh, between 140 points for Team G-Force and 162 for LDL Esports as we head into what is going to be a fantastic fantastic closing uh, period of this season. Next up comes RVL Esport. They are on 75 points with Team ESRL on 64. LRN Esports have 62 in 8th place. QSL Esports on 54. And Deluxe Esports down in 10th at the moment on 43 points. That is how the teams stand right now. Of course, we've got these squad rotations happening. So um, the drivers come in um, and uh, and just have to try and uh, and, and make sure that, they're, that the drivers of the team are being rotated for the, the best possible uh, times for the, their particular skill sets. And we are uh, looking forward to getting underway here. We've got one of the Aston Martins, I do believe, on track already. Uh, and that is one of the... Well, I was going to say one of the QSL teams, but I think am I might miss seeing exactly. Uh, is that actually going to be a Mercedes uh, on track? No, I believe it's Rumsco who is first out on track. And uh, 
people familiar with uh, with watching my commentaries will recognise that I like to try and give the uh, the first flying lap out to the first driver out on track so that we can get our uh, our flying laps underway. There is the terrible uh, castle sections, terribly thin and narrow. And uh, we will see if we get any I am stupid moments into the barriers under under the uh, the, the footings there of the uh, of the castle, and we end up with some safety cars. I hope we can uh, have a minimum amount of safety cars here tonight for you. Uh, but it is Baku, and Baku does Baku things, so we shall see. Um, very difficult section of the racetrack. We we're just going through there with Rumsco. Uh, where the barriers are flying past you at alarming speeds and you're trying to pick out those very small, sometimes blind uh, apex curbs. And now, of course, it's the easy stuff. If, as long as you've got a little bit of downforce on the car, we're on to the easy stuff uh, on the flat out section here. Never seems to end. And then for some strange reason, they put the start finish line almost at the breaking point of turn one. So you can almost uh, not quite catch up with the uh, with the lap. But QSL's Rumsco it is then we will take into the first section of the racetrack, breaking down nicely into turn one right uh, 90 degree left and that will be followed by a 90 degree left for turn two we'll hit the drs button about here at the scene of uh, many an alpine breakage moment as we head down towards what is a good overtaking opportunity turn three but you do need to cooperate with each other going through turn three and there is that runoff area on the right hand side of the track there we'll go for the last of four consecutive 90 degree corners into turn four, this time turning to the right. Then we'll have the little uh, piff puff chicane of turns five and six. Uh, turn six is a, a, a tighter corner than it looks as soon as you can see that, uh, that apex curb. Now turn seven, you'll see the drivers virtually straddle the apex of turn seven to straighten up the exit get a little short squirt of uh, of speed through here and <laughs> that was very close wasn't it on the front right from rumsco almost clattering into the castle before the uh, before the turn 12 exit now we go into 13 and 14 just looking for those uh, those clipping points really and then breaking heavily into turn 15 we're chasing the grip a little bit at this early stage of qualifying. Last major braking zone of the lap here. And it's just at the turn of the Sector 2 endpoint as well. Nothing much to do, though. Pick an, as straight a line as possible. Try and arrange for a tow with your teammate, if possible, in qualifying going down the, uh, the long straight here. Doesn't look like we've managed to achieve the, that particular goal uh, on the Aston Martin uh, cars of the QSL team. But Rumsco, it will be first on track with the first flying lap and he gets a 142.148 and of course straight away picks up the uh, the fastest provisional time so far next up then we'll see if we can find ourselves a uh, driver going quickly well lucas is pushing here in the williams uh lucas uh, and paul para lucas's teammate puts in a 40.2 two seconds better than rumsco's time early on a little lockup in front of Lucas to deal with as the RVL team of Thomas Leo and Guy Tance have uh, put their times in 40.2 and 41.2 respectively. Big delta between the two teammates there and GT10 uh, lower the bar for our uh, pole position of 40.084. Will we perhaps see a 39 tonight? Uh, by the look of things, you've got to say that's pretty likely. Lucas to the line. He goes second, beats his teammate by one-tenth of a second and is only one-tenth himself away from that provisional pole position. Looking very good. What of our... Uh of our pre-show team well the EXT's uh, Nam has just put in a, a faster time and he's managed to go faster by 12 thousandths of a second uh, Nordic Ninja says RLS better be cooking when I'm not there to be jinxed uh, the pole and win and to get tangled with his teammate well okay uh, a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of of issue there for him what of our um, pre-show team the uh, Rising Lions well Rambo is in the lobby he is racing but he's invalidated the current lap so he's going to have to start all over again and he goes into the pit lane now but Marco has not made it to qualifying so it looks like Marco will be starting at the back if indeed we can get him onto track G10 Vita uh, G10's Vita Looks like he might be able to pick up a distant toe. It will hurt him through the next couple of corners, but that this uh, McLaren in front of him might help him um, inadvertently. They look like they're going to be uh, sorting their own uh, toes out themselves, but no, the uh, McLaren pulls out. Uh, GT10 Vita has set a purple for, uh, second sector, but only for himself at this early stage. Um, 
if you're tuning in and you're looking forward to the race today, tell me who you're here to support um, and who your uh, pick for pole is so far. Got a big field spread at the moment in the times that have been set because uh, we've got a couple of very, very slow laps out there. But the 1 minute 40s is well populated. That's a 1 minute 40.765 from GT10's Vita. And we've got uh, just a few uh, cars and teams left to, to go. LDL's uh, team, uh, we've got Nico and uh, Oni. Oni has set a 45007. Should really be in an Aston Martin to be setting a 007 time. But Nico, our session host for the day, and the championship leading team um, is uh, currently on track and on screen and trying to put in a faster lap. Looked like the 151.5 was a charge lap for him, a preparation lap on the tyres. Unusual around Azerbaijan, maybe, but I'm sure he tiptoed his way around. So currently, with the first runs almost complete, you've got Nam from Boya uh, for G10. Uh, and then Lucas and Paul Parra in third and fourth position. Nico has a good position here and he's got a, his teammate right with him here. Hopefully it won't take too much of the aero through the next two corners for Nico. But this is very well worked with the uh, LDL team. And they'll be looking to try and restretch that lead out again. Uh, I saw a little bit of uh, chat uh, earlier on today about uh, their, their intentions that way. And Nico... Crosses the line, then P5 for LDL. Not an ideal place to start the race, but he's there or thereabouts on a 40.215. <laughs> Nordic Ninja say, when I'm not there driving, I can't say I'm on pole. Uh, but he, he's going to pick probably Nico, and hopefully that will be a jinx, <laughs> he reckons. Okay, good stuff. We're like a like, nice bit of healthy competition out there. Um, I know uh, there were some, some controversies after the previous uh, race, but hopefully everybody has uh, organised themselves and, uh, and got over what happened earlier on in the season and can attack this second half of the season, shortened second half of the season, just four, uh, four races to go in this part of the season. Um, and uh, we shall, obviously... Um, let's crown our F2 champion soon. Casper then for LRN. He is in the Ferrari right now. He's at uh, VMAX looking for the start finish line uh, to set to set and start his first time. It looks like Marcus has managed to arrive for Rising Lions. So that is a big relief for uh, the Alpine uh, for the team. Although he is in the Alpine accidentally. Looks like he didn't manage to select his car uh, thanks to joining late. So I believe that uh, Marcus for Rising Lions should, in fact, be in the same car as Rambo. Uh, but uh, we'll just have to, uh, to uh, remember that one for today. There's a good chance he was going to get the right seat, but unfortunately, it, uh, it, the game selected the wrong one. We've got Nam from Boya from Lucas. And uh, <laughs> Ninja saying that he sees nightmares from the last race dropping from P2 to P14 or something. Well, it's this, uh, this is a bit of a nightmare circuit for some drivers. Uh, it is very, very difficult to, uh, to make a race work without the uh, presence of full course cautions at the uh, very least. If not, uh, the, uh, the eventual course safety car that um, does tend to take up a lot of time uh, around this circuit. But we are fingers crossed. We are hoping this is a 6.001 kilometre circuit here at Baku. Um, and they, sp they spend so long, of course, at full throttle as part of the lap. It is, a, it is kind of ridiculous, the, <laughs> the length of the straight and full throttle point. Coming out of turn 16 all the way down to turn 1 is, um, frankly, could, could do with a little bit more interest in the middle of the circuit. Uh, but here comes Casper. Remember, we've got Nam from Boya from Lucas and Paul Para at the head of the field with the championship leading LDL teams, Nico, in fifth. Casper for LRN goes 10th, 41.353. And we're still waiting on the likes of the Haas team DLX, Carujo and uh, Rambo to set their times. Looks like Rambo is setting a time at the moment. Carujo, though, has hit the wall and uh, that is not going to help this lap at all. Let's go over and see what Rambo's up to as uh, he looks to be uh, on his way. So you need you need uh, your calmest drivers, I think, uh, in your team to, to take on Azerbaijan is the is the subtext I'm picking up from the chat here. Rambo uh, takes P7 40.232. That is five thousandths of a second away from P6. RVL's Thomas Leo 
Uh, and with just a laps to go for Marcus and uh, QSL's Wizard at the moment, some outlaps. QSL's Wizard has a 45.377. And we've got some outlaps starting from Pol Para and from Nico as well. Let's head down and see if uh, Marcus is near to starting a lap. It looks like he might be. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if we've got anybody else actually on a push lap at the moment. Uh, six minutes to go in the session. So this has ticked by very, very quickly. Uh, Lucas goes on the provisional pole. Lucas manages a 39.853. And we do get a 39.8. Uh, a, uh, uh, one, uh, one time so far in the 39s. That's fantastic to see. Uh, Carujo will be in the pits at the moment. So Lucas managed to set that lap. How is Boyer doing? Well, he's two tenths of a second up at this stage of the lap. And it looks like he's got his teammate well positioned here to try and help him. So two tenths of a second. We'll see him knocking on the door of provisional pole and certainly uh, a potential front row start here for G10's Boyer. He crosses the line and he actually lost time coming out of, um, of the final corner and in that final sector. So I'm kind of surprised because I thought he'd be on it uh, there. So, uh, yeah, we've got Nordic Ninja saying that driver rotation is important. And, um, yeah, he crashed last time he was in Azerbaijan. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's almost 50-50 whether you crash in Azerbaijan, isn't it? Um, we are hoping for a nice clean fight today. Oni sets a new pole, a provisional pole, and that is huge from Oni as Pol Para bounces over the apex curb. Not quite sure where to watch at any point, but there goes Oni. 39.654. That's two tenths faster than Lucas. It's four tenths faster than Nam and uh, and Boyer. Uh, and six tenths over Paul Para and his teammate Nico here at the moment. Here comes Paul Para. Then no teamwork going on at right now for picking up the toe here. And that is really powerful for the drivers. It's a 39. It's a 40. 40.079. It is a tenth of a second slower uh, f than pole for pole para. Uh, but he did uh, improve by a very small margin. We've got Boyer up next. This looks like a slower lap at the moment as Nico for the championship leading LDL team uh, is currently heading through the castle section. A little bit cautious through there. Um, you can lose a lot of time. I'm not sure you can gain a lot of time being aggressive through the castle section. Uh, but this is very short shifting. This is just a charge lap again, I think, for Nico. This is nothing special at this stage. Unless he's short shifting his way through the circuit at the moment. Let's uh, have a look at that sector two uh, uh, coming up. But no, he is just taking it easy. Maxence says still a nightmare for him too. He's LDL's Xenon. Uh, good to know. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think there's a lot of drivers uh, watching tonight and uh, being fairly grateful that they're not in the in the rotation for today and trying to cheer on their team. Uh, Pablo for DLX in the Haas has uh, retired from the session on a 40.9. Unfortunately, that's not going to be any better for him. So uh, we'll check out to see if um, if we've got a driver actually pushing right now. Oni's on his way in, of course. Popara we saw set his time. Uh, EXT's Duncan in P9 might be on a lap right now. Nope, he's invalidated, unfortunately. So I'm going to try and find you a driver who's really going for it. Um, and uh, what have we got? Carujo is going to try and stay out of the wall on this lap this time uh, for the DLX team. And uh, managing it so far, at least, through turn two. It's a busy racetrack in certain sectors. We do need drivers to not hang around offline. Uh, around the uh, the Baku circuit, and that's even that is a little bit distracting for Carujo. Uh, heading in out of turn three towards turn four, there was a McLaren just uh, in the eye line at least. Stayed to the right for a left hand braking portion of the track, but it's only on a 37 point, uh, 39 point six five four. Got a bit excited there. 37. We're not going to say 37 tonight from Lucas, who decided he's not going any quicker or at least can't make it through to, uh, to, to take another lap on. Outlaps have to be, uh, you have to be out of the pits by, uh, by now, really, or the next sort of 10 seconds to make sure you get through. Here is Carujo trying to make sure he doesn't start at the very tail of the grid. And again, just running out of steering performance, 
mid corner. I think that was just slightly late on the brakes, slightly over speed at the apex, and the uh, exit comes to you very, very quickly in turn uh, 15. Now we're foot to the floor and gently steering through the uh, 18 and 19 corners. We are full throttle, of course. The DRS is open. No assistance from our team who has retired from the session. Could have stayed out and helped your teammate. And he lifts himself to only to 16th at the moment. Nico's gone second on a 39.7. So that is the uh, championship leading team locking out the front row at this stage with Lucas in the pits not taking part. We've got Paul Para, Boyer, Thomas and Rambo all out for their outlaps, which is great to see. I think Rambo is likely on his way in. No, he is starting another fast lap here with a Ferrari uh, helmet in a uh, Alfa Romeo, as things stand. Uh, so, Marcus on an outlap has not set a time yet. Here comes Rambo uh, to, uh, to try and... Uh, and lift himself. He's in eighth right now. A good place to uh, to start the race, if possible. And uh, admin says, welcome to the stream. Like and subscribe if you can. That would be great if you would do so. Uh, make sure you bring in the rest of the team um, that are not driving tonight onto um, onto the onto the coverage because we we want to hear from everybody as well. Uh, and you, you can share the uh, the link via X if you like as well. We've got, uh, in fact, Rambo here as Duncan has retired from the session. I don't know if that was deliberate. I imagine it was at this late stage as all the final laps are beginning. We'll stay with Rambo, uh, he, but he is slower on this lap. So let's go up and see some of the drivers who are on the bubble here. We've got uh, uh, on the, certainly trying to get up into the front two rows of the grid. We've got Nam for EXT, currently fourth. He's been higher than this so far, and he's pushing to the to the start finish line now he'll try and pick up a little bit of the uh, air from the car on the left but no he's not happy with this lap so he won't start any higher than fourth but Paul Para Paul Para is eight uh, hundredths of a second faster in sector one at the moment Rambo retires Paul Para here in fifth position would love to lift himself uh, to be on the same row as his teammate in P3 or P4 uh, we've got Boya, we've got Thomas Leo on laps as well. Is that one for GT10, that lap? I think it might have been Vita into seventh, yep. So Vita goes into seventh for GT10. The driver's almost trying to organize, organize themselves in a Noah's Ark formation. Two by two here, if they can. Uh, that looks to be possibly the Alpine driven... Uh, incorrectly but look at this one from Paul Para he is four tenths of a second faster through sector two can he hold on here he doesn't have the benefit of a car in front and that seemed to steal a little bit of the march for the uh, Williams drivers tonight without uh, negotiating themselves a decent toe it has hurt them in the final sector. Four tenths it was. It's four tenths of a climb. It's P2. P2 for Paul Para. So we will go Red Bull Williams. Red Bull Williams uh, for our grid. Unless there are some absolute dramatics coming from Boya for GT10. Not this time from him. So it looks like we've got certainly the, uh, the sharp end of our grid organized. Lots of drivers retiring at this stage. It looks like it's going to be though. Oni and it's going to be Paul Para who will take the front row for this all-important race with LDL hoping to try and uh, stay uh, in the lead of this championship and, I mean, you know, also extend their lead as well. Para here uh, looking very good indeed uh, on his time. That is only uh, 16 thousandths of a second away from pole position and what a time. 39.654 there for LDLs only. We have 18 cars for you. I'd love to hear your bets as to how many cars we'll get home at the end of today's uh, today's race. Uh, Nordic Ninjas, I think impressed by what he's watching. I hope you guys all are. If you haven't said said hello yet, do so, please, and let me know who you're cheering for. But there we go. Congratulations to LDLs only for picking up a 139.654, uh, taking uh, taking the. 
the pole position away from pole para. And then in third, we've got Nico uh, for LDL and Lucas uh, in 39.853. Phenomenally close at the st- at the front there. The top 11 separated by less than a second. Next up comes EXTs now. And we've got GT10 pairing of Boyer ahead of Vita on sixth and seventh. In eighth, Thomas Leo uh, for the uh, RVL team. Then comes the rising line of Rambo, Duncan for EXT on 10th, Rumsko in 11th, Marcus, Jerowen, Pablo uh, Def and Gaitance from Casper, Carujo and uh, the final driver there at the tail of the field. Uh, ready to start the race. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Hopefully we will have a nice, uh, a nice entertaining race for you ahead of us. Let's get your predictions in. Uh, before we get underway, we don't have a formation lap to uh, to to sort out our predictions as the drivers just organised their final adjustments and have a final chats with their engineers. Uh, let me hear your podium predictions. I'd love to know. Uh, you can only pick three, though. Don't be greedy. Uh, let's see. Uh, can LDL hold on? Uh, can they work together? Can these two teams at the front of the grid manage to work together well enough here tonight um, to uh, to make this work? Because quite frankly. It is uh, it's very very difficult to cooperate with each other uh, going around these uh, this this Baku circuit without holding each other up or or opening the door for somebody else. Very very difficult. It's uh, it's it's going to be. Um, we certainly had fireworks last time out in Kota. Will it continue here at this awesome uh, awesome league? This is F2, of course, for the Esports Masters League. You are watching League Racing TV and you are listening. If you haven't got me on mute yet to Webbo <laughs> to, uh, to enjoy tonight's racing. Uh, so it is going to be, of course, um, it's the uh, Team G-Force with Lucas and Paul Parra in reverse, racing in the Williams in second and fourth, LDL at the start, and Nordic Ninja says Nico, Paul Parra, and Lucas, his predictions for the podium. Can you, any advance on that, or are you going to give all the cred over to um, to Nordic Ninja <laughs> for his predictions. We shall see. Um, if you spot something or you find something interesting on the stream um, that I'm not talking about, say so on the chat. I will try my level best to interact with you. Second, third, fourth, fifth pairs of eyes are incredibly useful as a commentator, and I will try and keep track of the stories uh, contained within the race for you as we see the sun shining brightly here at the Azerbaijan circuit. Temperatures will be soaring. Good evening to Moustic. Good to have you. We've got Maze watching as well, of course. I didn't say hello really to Maxence, just referenced his chat earlier on. But greetings to everybody. Uh, we're so thrilled that you can be with us. And um, as I said last time I was here, my secret mission is to try and um, make you miss the qualifying of F1 because you're so enthralled with the race here in F2. We shall see uh, how things uh, work out there. Um, but we're ready to get underway. We, uh, I've got to get my screen organised really quickly. I've got no menus, but we're ready to get underway. It is LDL Zoni leading away from pole position and pole para in second place as the drivers manage to organise themselves, organize themselves really nicely, in fact, through the uh, lead pack of the group. And actually, pretty clean start. Uh, from the lead groups and all cars making it through. LDL's Nico uh, getting level there with the Williams of Lucas into turn two and managing to hold on to his position. He's tucked right up behind the rear wing of the Williams. We may end up with three cars wide down here as LDL's Nico goes screaming down the inside. We'll look at the tyre comparison in a minute because <laughs> I couldn't get the screen organised in time. Uh, we're going straight to the lights. But it is Paul Paris who holds on to second. They are just gifting this lead out to Oni as uh, Nico dies down the inside this will take some cooperation between the two of them and they go side by side they do leave enough uh, racing room between them and finally it is LDL first and second and that took a lot of effort to get into that position uh, let's have a look at our uh, initially at our position changes you can say a quick look on uh, on screen there uh, but hard ties for the top four um, looking to try and uh, extend this first stint as deep as possible or at least have the most flexible tire option for them Nam is looking really good for EXT here tucked up behind Lucas uh, it's one way traffic though through the uh, tricky turn 15 here and uh, Max on saying Nico already working for Oni. Well, we shall see. He's certainly done a good job for himself and for the team. As the VSC has been called, someone's gone uh, gone wrong in the castle section, have they? Um, not quite sure what's happened here. We've got one one car, Carujo, at the back. No visible damage on Carujo's car. 
Um, and I'm not quite sure exactly what has happened there. 3.2 seconds is the lead for Oni against his teammate Nico as they run under the uh, virtual safety car Delta time. Managing this is going to be really, really difficult here. As Nordic Ninja says, Nico should be as slow as possible in the middle section of the, of the lap. But really, he's still got to work for himself as well. And the best opportunity for, for the uh, team here will be, of course, to get a 1-2. So if he sacrifices himself too much, he's uh, only going to bring himself into danger for the rest of the team. It is then Oni, Nico, Polparo, Lucas, Nam, Boyer, Vita, uh, Thomas, Duncan and Rumsko, your top 10 uh, as we uh, after the first lap and into, of course, the first VSC uh, group. We've got a couple of cars in the pits, Jerome, Pablo and Casper, the two Ferraris and a Haas in the car, in, in the pits. Presumably some damage uh, being uh, repaired. Polpara is looking very racy as we go green. Flag racing once again and uh, he was ready to pounce here as he goes tucked right up uh, into the rear, rear wing. Uh, and we run through then as uh, Paul Power is looking for a good opportunity to make an overtake. And Nico is uh, is not particularly quick, perhaps deliberately so, as uh, as our audience have suggested so far. Uh, as Harvey says, Nico's just somewhat of a fraud here. Don't worry, <laughs> we shall see. Uh, but uh, Oni has a gap and it's dropped a little bit through the VSC period down to 2.8 seconds only in uh, in, two, in two laps uh, so it's certainly working out very well indeed for him a little lock up there from the back of the Williams uh, uh, going through so uh, certainly pushing hard at the moment is Paul Parrott and we'll, we'll ride with him as we're looking to try and get that slipstream uh, you've got a fancy being this close two tenths of a second on the way out of turn 19 uh, he's got to be with a great shot of drawing alongside at very least here he goes then to the inside he's been given the inside by Nico uh, will he be able to hang on here D breaking heavily down into turn one and it's a retake of the position for Paul Parra just about holds it on and in the meantime in the background of that move Nam got ahead of Lucas as well Nico now into third Nam into fourth Lucas into fifth and I think we've got Boya and Vita playing a fantastic team game in the Mercedes GT10s next to each other and uh, coming back then oh no this is another uh, attempted move then for Nam who's trying to go for third position look at this on the medium tires after the restart and it's looking very good for him as he gets escorted towards the hashtag Azerbaijan Grand Prix uh, advertising boardings there from uh, from the Williams driver Paul Parrott uh, and uh, in the medium tires he's looking incredibly good uh, at this early stage is Nam uh, everybody now on mediums or hards, of course, after the uh, VSC pit stops that went on. The, the rearmost three in the grid didn't go onto hard tyres. They've gone onto, so onto mediums. So uh, they'll probably have to stop again unless we have uh, egregious amounts of safety cars. You see the little bit of, uh, little bit of dirt kicked up off the tail of the Williams of Paul Parra there. 3.5 seconds now the, the lead. It's interesting to see that Nico has dropped down the order uh, from the very start. Uh, and uh, he cannot seem to live with his teammates' pace at this early stage, but perhaps the race will come to him on the medium tyres later on. Here, then, is Nam in the same position Paul Parra was in earlier on, but he's three and a half tenths of a second. This should be enough on the medium tyres with the traction advantage he's got. He tucks up in, underneath the rear wing once again, goes side by side, and there you can see the beautiful overspeed by Nam already well ahead here. It's going to be so far ahead that Paul Parra will try and use some of the slipstream in return as they head down towards the braking zone and it is uh, Nico going for the inside line again Polpara left that door open slightly and he's almost squeezed to the wall but Polpara just has enough room and uh, well raced from Nico that time and sweeping around the outside with some confidence that uh, Nico didn't have the braking performance into turn two and he manages to get the, get the position he's got the first of the DRS profit and here comes Boyer looking racy on Nico himself Boyer down the inside into turn three and they'll go side by side once again as we've got uh, the audience closing their eyes you're not in the you're not in the cockpit you can keep your eyes open maze you're all right and there they go boyer uh, alongside with nico and just sneaks through oh that was very nice there through there as uh, boyer sneaks through and nico is dropping down dropping down also is lucas and he's now got duncan on the overtake Duncan down the inside into turn seven. A uh, little w wiggle at the, at the rear and he just gets through. Uh, looks like Lucas sensibly yielding before they reach the castle. And we'll just drop th back through the order. But uh, right at the top of proceedings, 
LDL's only leads by 2.4 seconds. Now, Nam is very much on the offensive. Paul Parrott is going to struggle here to stay within the DRS zone of the medium tyre shod Nam. And he's just slipped out of DRS for a moment. He'll pick up the next uh, DRS detection in a minute and see if he can get back on as he picks up a fastest middle sector there. And he does successfully manage to get the DRS uh, going down the long crucial straight this will help him um, defend against Boyer who is on the ascendancy here Nico down to fifth position right now uh, this is Paul Parra's view of the Alpha Tauri in front of him uh, and the toe not really helping a great deal uh, we've got a, a nice overtake for position coming here from that's Rambo overtaking Vita who's dropped down to ninth Gaitans has gone up ahead of Rumsko into 11th position uh, and we'll have a quick look at uh, changes of position in just a moment for you but we're four laps deep we have no retirement so far so that's looking excellent five places up for Wizard four for up for Duncan uh, very nice we've got three down for Lucas seven down for Thomas Leo and the, the guys that pitted at the back of the uh, at the back of the grid as you would expect at this stage but I was kind of expecting a little bit uh, more in the way of fireworks so far let's see what the rest, the rest of the race has got in, in hand for us we're almost at 20% distance would you believe Paul Parra is in third position he has a four tenth of a second gap to Nam now Paul Parra was the fastest man on track in this sector of the racetrack last lap through so he's clearly got uh, a good race car underneath him for this middle sector has he actually given up a little bit of top speed i wonder uh, because the degree to which nam went past him was was a lot faster than paul para himself managed on nico in in the same position uh, so here we go then paul para Closing in on the final braking zone of the lap. There's a big, big lockup, is it, for the Alpha Tauri EXT of Nam? This is down to four and a half tenths of a second now as they exit turn 15. Those medium tyres will be in a good place. Uh, and Paul Parra's hards still probably not quite there yet, as Chowski says. Go Rumsko and Wizard. Good to have your support there uh, for the team, Chowski. And here is Paul Parra. His top speed doesn't look too bad as he draws alongside with the benefit of the DRS. And in fact, he's fully uh, ahead before they reach the braking zone. So fairly equal looking top speed uh, ability from both those cars. Uh, and they will now pick up the, uh, the chase of Oni, who actually is drifting back slightly here. Hasn't had the best of lap fives. Uh, finds himself now 1.8 seconds only away from P2. Uh, but he's had it all to himself so far this race. I don't think this race is run... Uh, done and dusted, though, for the lead. I think we may still have plenty to uh, talk about as we run through here. Now, Paul Parra uh, has to be the one breaking the air for the uh, car behind. So the reverse of the situation he had earlier on in the Williams, uh, but uh, picking up the pace once again, trying to get through here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think we've got any crash gate uh, uh, conspiracies going on right now. Uh, but LRN have both put themselves um, in the pits uh, early on through lap one. So they both had their issue um, and uh, clearly some damage there to fix in the pit in the pit lane. A bit too early to go for uh, an opportunistic pit stop. Uh, further down the order. So on lap six, it's only from Polpara, from Nam, from Boyer, from Nico. And then comes Duncan and Lucas, who's... Picking up the pace again now on those hard tyres. May have just touched the wall or at least touched the uh, the dirt on very close to the wall there. Heading through the uh, turn, 15, uh, turn 14 and 15 corners. Uh, but he is uh, obviously Paul Parra's teammate and will try his level best to uh, catch Duncan. That gap has extended quite considerably now. Here is the battle for third. Once again, as Nam with the DRS, uh, can um, they can almost afford to slipstream each other here because they are bringing themselves closer to Oni because of that overspeed factor of the, sli of the DRS. And Paul Parra almost uh, switched that rear end out coming out of turn one, but he held that very well. It's going to hurt him, though, chasing uh, behind Nam. And now he's got uh, mirrors full of Mercedes, uh, the G10 driver of, uh, of Boyer in the car. There goes Duncan passing Nico down the inside and Nico is flattered to deceive at this early stage of the race and is finding himself going backwards on the hard tyres but I can't stress enough the hard tyres just don't suit some drivers and they put the mediums on it's like a different person in the cockpit. 
so we, sh we shall see later on. You, you expect anything from around half distance. Uh, if we don't pick up any more full course cautions for all the tyre changes, quite frankly, um, because the, the medium race tyre is generally speaking the tyre you want to spend the longest amount of the race on, uh, regardless of uh, what you start on. We shall see. LDLs only has a lead of 1.5 seconds from Nam, from Paul Parra, from Boyer. Wizard has retired. Wizard down, uh, it, down the order. Let's see if we can find out where that has occurred. Uh, it's not just yet here. We'll just join Jerome on board. It was into turn seven. Looks like he may have uh, been in the wall in turn seven. And there we go. First of our safety cars will be enacted. And let's wait and see uh, as we head into the pits. Uh, I imagine for some uh, some speculative pit stops. Uh, we'll see who feels like it. Well, the first one with an option for this for the pit lane will be Oni, as he now goes through. Will he decide to give up potential track position here? Looks like he's shaping to head into the pit lane. Yes, indeed he is. So pit stops for Oni. Will we see one from Nam? Will the entire grid go through? And will we see a uh, some good track position for those rearmost drivers who already made their first pit stops? Will they now take the opportunity, do we think, to uh, to stay out, recatch all these drivers now pitting and try and uh, get their track position back this is thomas leo and he's heading in but the leaders are already back out of the pit like pits again so they're already making them uh, uh, making their way out of course one factor you've got to bear in mind here is that the drivers uh, will have to queue if they're too close to their teammates uh, in race order with the exception of marcus and rambo thanks to that uh, car selection by the game so only re takes the lead of course didn't actually ever give it up but look at that we've got a penalty it's a five second penalty that can only have been caused uh by a uh, a pit lane uh speed limit infraction and that makes a huge difference to our uh, to our lead of our race here especially with a safety car happening you really can't afford to give away uh large uh large penalties like that in a close fought race such as this where safety car at the end could bring everybody back together again another pit stop for LDLs only could cost him uh, obviously five seconds at the start in addition to the stationary time he's the only one it seems who's picked up a penalty so it could have been speeding under the uh, safety car delta time but I probably I didn't actually catch it on screen if you managed to catch it do confirm for me what the penalty was for my suspicion is heading on into the pit lane so momentary lapse potentially from Oni could have been heading for the pit lane actually at a reduced pace and just uh, underestimated the uh, the braking position uh, there. So we shall uh, wait to uh, find out what happens. Of course, the safety car will be in, uh, will be will be out for a couple of laps here, um, and uh, it will allow the whole field to recatch. I wonder if Oni would be considering a second pit stop to pay off that um, that penalty, so that he's not forced to pay it later. Is the medium win medium tire window genuinely open with uh, 18 laps to go? Probably 16, 17 race laps. I would say 16. Uh, I'm doing my maths all wrong. No, no, I'm doing okay on my maths. So I think we'll probably end up with about 16. Uh, full speed laps potentially that could be too much for these medium tires as they uh, they will obviously be racing each other hard only will have no gap at all on the restart and i hope that we won't have any city games happening um on the restart either i'd love to just have a clean old restart without uh, too many overlaps and difficulties back to the position changes how have things affected well rambo's gone up four which is very handy for him and nam up three he's managed to overtake pol para during that pit stop which is uh, uh, or, or at least maintain that second position i should say uh, up three places for guy Tantz and for carujo as well as duncan Two up for Boya and three up for Nam. And then some uh, some losers in terms of positions from the start as well. Uh, Thomas Leo, the biggest of them so far for RVL. He may well have had, had to queue in the pits there with his teammate, unfortunately, for him. Um, but uh, the rearmost car of Casper for LRN is almost at the tail of the safety car. Will we be able to possibly go racing um, early on here? earlier than expected if the uh, if the, the field spread has been reduced to virtually nothing 
Keep your eye out, though, for race control messaging about the safety car. We, we would like it to come in, if at all possible. Oni from Nam and Paul Parry, your top three. Then comes Boyer, uh, Rambo and Nico. In seventh is Duncan, Lucas, uh, Vita and Marcus, your top ten. Then uh, Rumsko, Gaitans, Thomas Leo, Carujo, uh, and then the three rearmost drivers, Jerome, Pablo and Casper, uh, making out your 17-car remainder of the field one fewer cars on the grid means uh, a slightly reduced chance of further safety cars we have to get the first lap or two out of uh, away from the safety car here and the safety car will come in this lap thank goodness but it actually really reduces Oni's uh, options here that was a very late uh, call from race control uh, and Oni can now not power out of uh, of turn 16 and he has to kind of bring the whole field together and wait to go. We'll ride with pole power perhaps here. Uh, you're not supposed to go two by two. Um, you're supposed to be legitimately behind the driver you're supposed to be um, on restarts. And that does tend to help in terms of uh, causing accidents. But actually the safest place to be is slightly offset from the car in front. Uh, and we are very, very close here to the, um, to the start finish line now. And there we go, a launch from Oni. Polpara and Nam are very close to one another and have picked um, picked up the pace at a very similar time. Oni, his gap is now three tenths of a second with Polpara needing to defend here. Is that a, a dive bomb coming? That is LDL's Nico getting back past uh, Rambo on the restart. Nico on the mediums, Rambo on the hards. Any of the hard r runners right now are going to struggle for a lap or two after the restart. Those tyres will just not be where they want them at all as Polpara chases down uh, Nam. And it uh, looks like we've got uh, Nico very much on the ascendancy and he is challenging uh, G10's Boyer. He got fully alongside there and passed by turn five. So uh, great restart from Nico, who's picked up two places. And what was I saying earlier about tyres suiting different drivers differently? He looks completely different now on the medium tyres. Um, and uh, he's got a medium tyre shot, power power at Hard tyre shot now in front of him and then his teammate Oni on mediums as well at the front of the grid. So he's looking very good indeed. Paul Parrott is in second position. Oni has dropped the hammer. How about that for a restart from our leader? That is 1.6 seconds. He's kind of toying with the rest of the grid here, I feel. Um, if he's got that kind of restart pace behind him, it was about three tenths of a second heading down into the, uh, into the first corner. And then suddenly, boom. He's opened that gap out to now two seconds. That's in insane. Is it more to do with Polpara and Nam fighting with each other? We shall see as Polpara then, of course, is almost too close here to the Alpha Tauri. I think he's had to uh, duck out of the throttle slightly. Just blend the, thr the throttle. Now he can pick up the, uh, the slipstream. There's no um, DRS at this stage. Webo checks. There's no DRS at this stage, and we're ending up. We're going to end up almost three wide, are we? No. Down goes Paul Parra with a decisive move down the inside. Nico bides his time, doesn't go for it too early on, and Nam is forced to defend. Is he going to over defend though and open the door out to Nico? Uh, so, Paul Parra now following behind the Williams. Nico, will we see a move here? Uh, absolutely he's got a nice slipstream the benefit the double toe there and into turn three nico from uh, from down in i think it was down in sixth position now into third on lap 11 the second lap after the restart looking very good here for ldl and their mission to uh, uh to reassert themselves in the championship lead shall we say after after having that uh, gap cut so drastically in the previous race kota really didn't work out for them but it looks like Azerbaijan is going nicely, at least so far. 2.2 seconds, the gap at the front of the grid. Will Polpara be able to mount some kind of a, um, an attack now on Oni? Or is he going to be uh, wary of the other Red Bull behind him? Again, uh, a whole story yet to play out for us. Let's have a look then at Duncan for EXT. They've shone incredibly well so far in this race. And the Alpha Tauri uh, driving cars as I need to stop being fooled by those uh, puffs of tyre smoke coming through turn, uh, turn 16. It's not, um, it seems to be for everybody. Here comes Duncan then. He's got a great opportunity. So he has got, uh, he's got the slipstream and he's passed very early. 
past the uh, Mercedes, and that is the difference in traction on the medium tyre versus the hards. Now we have the DRS enabled, uh, so we go down. We look like we've got a nice battle brewing uh, just further back here between Lucas. Vita goes for the move down the inside. Vita passed, and he's now only got his teammate um, in front of him there into P6. That's nice, nicely done for the G10 team. They show, uh, showed very nicely in Cota as well. And uh, further down the order, looks like Carujo has just been overtaken by Casper. Lucas back past Vita. Uh, and that was a nice bit of retaliation there and very cleanly through from, uh, from Lucas. Beautiful stuff. And uh, up near the front then, Paul Parra is uh, gunning for this second position. 1.2 seconds the gap for LDLs only. I think he's probably used quite a bit of his uh, his battery on that um, on that restart, and he's had to go and charge it. There goes Nam picking up a three-second track ab limits abuse penalty. The question for me is, has Oni actually got enough pace within him to pay off this five-second penalty? Nam now has a three-second penalty to pay, and it, it could be advantage Paul Parra. It could be Nico who uh, had such a rough first, sec uh, first sector that he, um, he, went, um, he went off. Let me see. I'm being asked about uh, Oni. Any visible damage to my eyesight? No. Uh, but he certainly dropped off the pace quite considerably. Uh, rear, uh, right front wing yellow, we are being told there by Harvey. That's great info for us. Not great info for Oni. Uh, and uh, here is the slipstream then. this That's the... The, the advantage of the clean aero and it looks like Oni is coming into the pits and this is going to be a really hard pit stop for him. It's going to be a five second hold, of course, for the penalty. Uh, and that is Nordic Ninja then just just explaining there, of course, that the pace dropped drastically for him. So Nam and Duncan for EXT up to third and fourth. Everybody slots up and Oni, because it was so soon after that pit stop, uh, he has had to... Uh, a drop to the back of the field now. He has got quite the challenge in front of him uh, with 14 complete laps to go. That's going to be quite difficult for Oni to pick up a good result here for LDL. And that is Rumsko and Rambo fighting hard and clean. Nicely done there. He's actually got his teammate directly behind him has Rambo now. Marcus uh, up from uh, pretty low in the field earlier on. And uh, that's his teammate they're just in the wrong car. Um, should be in the Alfa Romeo there. Uh, and uh, they're in ninth and 10th currently are the Rising Lions. Uh, we heard from uh, Coguinho earlier on. And uh, it was great to uh, great to hear from him. And he'll be working furiously to try and bring those, uh, those drivers up in the grid. And keeping them informed, of course, of Oni's uh, uh, decline, shall we say, kindly. Um, thanks to whatever happened. Uh, Nordic says respect for the, the crash because it could have been a harder hit. Well, absolutely. Uh, it's it's uh, not easy to only uh, damage your wing by a yellow uh, degree in, uh, in Baku, for sure. Here is Nico then. He has uh, got the bit between his teeth. He is absolutely on it. Uh, in this sector of the of the um, of the race, and there he goes into first position. That's a take for the lead for Nico after doing so well in qualifying and being virtually nowhere. But it, that looked like a tag from the back. It looked like Paul Parra, I'm sure, accidentally uh, tagged uh, Nico uh, in the back. Both of them are suffering. That is huge. That is really huge for our race. Paul Parra down to fifth. Nico, who had just retaken, uh, had just take, retaken the lead for LDL, uh, going incredibly well. Boyer is slow. Boyer might well have been caught up in that one as as well. That looks like we just had some uh, some carbon fiber being shattered across the across the racetrack. So Boyer down to sixth. Nico in seventh. Boyer, I think, is uh, is is fighting wounded here. He may be quite happy to put on medium tires shortly, but it looks like he may have to pick up a little bit of uh, of damage repair in the pits as well so again the race turns on its head Duncan leads for EXT Nam is in second place but has a three second penalty mind you he's got a 2.3 second advantage over Lucas Paul Parra down to fourth after tagging the back of LDL um, we will obviously have that investigated by the stewards I'm sure LDL will have um, have words to say I, I, by the look of things, that was a misjudgment rather than anything um, uh, malicious from uh, from Paul Parra because he lost out too and he's now in fourth position. Will we see pit stops from those ones that had an issue? Uh, really tricky. Down into that uh, 
He was just unsighted, may have lost a little bit of grip on the car, braking heavily into turn one after just losing the lead. But we shall watch these cars and see if there are any pit stops coming. We managed to avoid another, um, another full course caution that time out, which was good. As Maxon, uh, Maxon says, every time we're leading... Something goes wrong. Well, you're leading the championship at the moment. Out of the race goes Thomas Leo. Thomas Leo out of the race. VSC. Surely now anybody with damage is coming in. There goes Boyer. There goes Paul Parra. There goes Nico. All into the pits. Anybody else making a last-ditch uh, effort to come in? We'll try and get a view of what happened to Thomas Leo. It was potentially through these two turns here. But, yeah, it must have been um, through the nothing turns of turns 18 and 19 where Thomas Leo retired so another safety car Nam still has that penalty wasn't able to make a call to go into the pits EXT on top first and second positions all change in the group Paul Parra with 10 laps to go 10 racing laps after the uh, VSC I would imagine maybe 11 laps has put soft tyres on that is brave in my view that is a big big uh uh, big, big call from the team or from Paul Parra to fit the soft tyres at this stage. If you're anticipating another uh, another problem on the track, another safety car, then maybe it's OK. But uh, Paul Parra, soft tyres, the only one that's, that has made that decision at this stage. And you do burn through those soft tyres quickly here at Baku through the middle sector. Thoughts about some crossing the white lines on pit lane entry. Um, there are a lot of lines painted on these public roads as well. Um, so it's sometimes a little bit difficult to read. We don't have, uh, you know, full on uh, spotters for every team running here like they do in uh, F1 Esports. Uh, but Duncan, uh, we've now got a disqualification for Carujo for uh, parking in a dangerous location. That is just, uh, I'm sure, an inadvertent stoppage on the track. We have a yellow flag, but here are the two AXT drivers. We should be under green flag racing. We are. As Duncan goes past Nam, they will try and cooperate now to use the DRS through here. Lucas, in third position, will watch this, th these two and try and stay within the three-second uh, gap to Nam, at very least, and hold on to a potential second position here for the team. LDL. Championship leaders now in 10th and 12th as Oni passes Gaitans uh, down further in the grid. Nam is one quarter of a second behind his teammate as they head down towards turn three. Vita looking good for GT10 as uh, those accidents and incidents occurred to the, uh, to the rivals that were in front of them earlier on. Polpara on those soft tyres uh, will be dragging Nico through the grid. I imagine another virtual safety car. There we go. And uh, Nordic managed to watch uh, watch the stream back. That's uh, fantastic research from Nordic. So uh, could have been a late call there. We shall see um, after the race, of course, in the stewards' inquiries. It looks like the F123 platform doesn't punish that so much. Um, so that is a question for the stewards post-race. Another VSC then on lap 16 of 26. It's Duncan and Nam leading this one for EXT, but with... Uh, not a sufficient lead just yet to hold on to second place. Lucas is in third in the Williams. And next up comes GT10's Vita driving the Mercedes and car number five. We've got uh, Rambo for the Rising Lions in P5. Um, and he leads a uh, trio of cars. Rumsko, Marcus, his teammate, and Jerowen in eighth. With our uh, recently repaired or pitted Paul Parra, Nico, and only Oni down in ninth. 10th and 11th your favorites for the um for the the podium uh, potentially there in that group as as boyer who looked to be the innocent party in that exchange vita is alongside lucas and has managed to make the overtake for the provisional third place at this stage vita uh, for gt10 doing just what the gt10 team team did in kota and coming good towards the latter half of our race and that's of course when it is going to be uh, most advantageous for you hard tires on nam mediums on th second third and fourth at this stage 
Rumsko in sixth position for QSL has the DRS. We've got Lucas three tenths of a second only behind Vita at this stage. And what of Paul Para, Nico, Boyer and Oni? Well, Boyer has actually passed Oni. I wonder, you know, if Oni has got damage, he, he's been unable to repair, maybe floor damage as well as the front wing. Uh, I didn't catch his pit stop to see if he did a full front wing change. You've got to imagine he did, though, with the pace differential he had earlier. But uh, LDL with a lot of work to do here to get a decent score back. Another yellow fa flag, this time in uh, sector one, where there are hardly any cars. It looks like Pablo may have just tagged the wall maybe for a second. Uh, and uh, that was the I issue for him. Or maybe we've got some debris. Uh, or a retiring car going through there. We've lost Thomas Leo, Wizard, and Carujo as Marcus against Rumsko. And Rumsko ends up in the wall. There was no contact, but uh, yeah, uh, Rumsko lost, lost the grip on the car, ended up touching the wall there. And uh, won't be feeling too good about that, it's that exchange. Vita is uh, hot on the heels then of the EXT team. Uh, Duncan, who might be on the slowdown for EXT instruction here. He's actually trying to open the gap, I think, for Nam. And this is a dangerous, dangerous, a difficult game then for EXT to play. Here comes second, third and fourth. Vita, Lucas and, uh, and Duncan in front of all of them as they head into turn one. No change of position that time, surprisingly. Rumsko in the pits after clattering the wall hard. And it's another VSC. Goodness me, I've lost count of how many... Um, caution periods we've had in this race as uh, Duncan will go as slow as humanly possible I think here against the Delta and Nam will go as fast as possible to try and secure the 1-2 for EXT we have a total of eight laps plus the end of the one that they're on now to finish this race out how many more caution periods is it possible to have good to see uh, Daz cheering on GT10 as well welcome to the stream as uh, the drivers now get green flag racing once again. It's Vita in third position provisionally trying to uh, close in that gap, trying to make an overtake and stop these games being played by the XT uh, team. Legitimate games, I have to say. Perfect legitimate tactic to open up the gap to a penalised driver in front. That's your teammate. I definitely buy it. Duncan, frankly, giving up the chance of a lead here um, and, and a win in order to make the 1-2 for his team. But... He's got to then be able to maximize the exit out of turn 16 and reopen the gap. So he's uh, slowed the cars down through the second sector. Now he's got to get right back on it. And that is such a challenge for the drivers to uh, change the amount to which they're pushing. Whether they're on a quali lap or not, just completely stop using the uh, ERS uh, button and save it all to come out of turn 16 potentially as he will now run four tenths of a second ahead of Vita. Vita will surely still have a strong advantage here. But for the time being, EXT doing what's required to secure the 1-2 for the team. Vita will not close sufficiently on Duncan unless he really fancies a dive bomb. No, he's playing it sensible at the moment. Three tenths of a second the gap down to. He'll get another batch of DRS here. Uh, well, no, he won't. In fact, he'll get another batch of slipstream down towards turn uh, three, I believe. And uh, uh, Nordic asking if he's being a snitch. Well, uh, I would be calling it if I had seen it, uh, Ninja. So round the outside tries Vita. I think there was a little tangle of wheels there, but they tiptoe their way out of the corner. Duncan trying to do what he needs to do for his team, trying to stay on Vita now. And now Vita, of course, with just half the track uh, to go before the next DRS detection, has to do exactly the same thing. Uh, Lucas has closed in as well uh, to this group. So we have a, a hot, hot battle for second position at this stage. We thought that Oni was going to get away with this one all by himself maybe earlier on. He certainly seemed to have the pace. But an accident, unforced error, you'd have to say, um, that uh, caused the yellow right front wing damage on the car has uh, tipped him back to 11th and it seems to have damaged more than just that front wing because uh, he's still in 11th position stuck in a bit of a in a bit of a no man's land at the moment and these are the closest cars on track right now the battle for second position as Vita has really dropped the hammer here and is now going to go in pursuit of that three second gap he needs to try and secure the win for his G10 team and of course for himself the drivers will definitely be racing um, for their own glory 
where possible. Duncan has a good slipstream and a DRS advantage, and there's no ERS on the back of Vita's cart. So Vita is defenseless, um, and uh, Duncan, very wise uh, use of ERS there in comparison to maybe Vita, who might have had to have spent a lot of that uh, for the next one. Jerome making uh, maybe an unscheduled pit stop, but 12 lap old mediums. So the same age of tyre as these three here at the moment. Um, I suppose if you can still fight with the cars around you and you've got a bit of a gap behind, there's no point in pitting. Uh, but 12 lap old tyres, of course, for the top six, uh, the hards shouldn't be a problem. The mediums will be starting to feel uh, second best. Now Duncan still trying to uh, to open that gap out again as Nordic Ninja is calling for a safety car. Please don't, Nordic Ninja. <laughs> um, we, I, I'm, I'm a bit done with them, quite frankly, so <laughs> I would rather we didn't, but I, I know exactly what you mean, just to close the rest of the field up. We've got a great battle, though, here for second place and uh, potentially uh, to close in on the win. Can Duncan continue to just uh, toy around with Vita and Lucas? As they go through, Moustic saying, no C, SC, no SC, no SC, <laughs> indeed. Uh, Nico going for P2. Uh, he says, OK, well, yeah, Nico has just picked up the uh, picked up a position as Marcus, uh, having just been overtaken, I think had the uh, clean air taken off his front wing and uh, backed himself into the barrier, unfortunately. Uh, that was uh, pretty difficult for him. Here comes Lucas then, one-tenth of a second behind Vita, who has dropped a significant amount away from Duncan. Lucas will get the overspeed. He's nowhere near to to, uh, to Duncan, though, who can continue to uh, extend the gap at the front. Behind, though, here comes Nico, screaming through on those medium tyres, up into fifth position. It was uh, a very, uh, very uh, good call there from... Uh, from the chat uh, from Maxon saying that uh, Nico's got P2 set in his sights. Looked like Paul Parra was struggling through the corner there. Those soft tyres are not enjoying life right now. Um, and uh, so far, Duncan really, really doing the job here for the EXT team, team and holding off uh, the gap for Nam as much as possible. He's maybe even doing too much right now. He could do with uh, maybe extending his lead now a little bit over P3, over Lucas. So the EXT team, of course, trying to secure P1 uh, and P2 out of this race. Jerome passes Casper for the LRN teams. Uh, but uh, five seconds that gap is now out to. So obviously the, the larger he can build that gap, the better. If we can survive the next three laps, we will have no more safety cars <laughs> for the race. Uh, tremendous work, though. Here comes Nico passing Vita. Whoa! Through turn uh, 50, two, three turn 13, excuse me. Uh, amazing stuff for Nico. That was smooth as you like, and he can afford to do that because he's still within DRS of the car in front. If you'd have done that uh, and you were on your own with a, with a driver, you'd have only uh, given up the place straight back again. But it will be Lucas who will get the DRS now on Duncan, the first of the DRS profit. Moustic is saying, no, 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 SC. <laughs> and here is Lucas then. DRS in, uh, in effect. Duncan is obviously using his electrical boost as much as he can. It does look like Lucas has kind of uh, chilled a little bit and couldn't get the gap. So he can't go off in pursuit of Nam. This is, uh, Duncan is doing a fantastic job here for the team. <laughs> Lots of battling in the chat about safety cars. Lap 22 of 26. EXT currently doing enough to take home P1 and P2 as hot in pursuit comes Lucas, Nico, Vita, and uh, then a little bit further back, Rambo, your current uh, your current top six here. <laughs> Harvey asking why Marcus is in Alpine. Because he turned up late, Harvey. Because he turned up late. <laughs> and the game decided that his punishment was to be in an Alpine. Here comes Nico into turn uh, four and five. Oh, nice one against, uh, against Lucas. Nico uh, cruising through there very nicely indeed. So Nico now in third. And he is the first one with DRS Profit this time. He has got the youngest medium tyres. This is looking great. <laughs> Nordic asking for crash game. Nam has another penalty. Whoa, that's just opened things out. It's now six seconds. Amazing. So all that work that Duncan has done. And Nam uh, couldn't keep it under control. Couldn't keep it cool. 
keep his gap and take it easy. Five second penalty for a severe collision between Casper and Pablo. The Haas and the Ferrari cars have been next to each other uh, and, uh, and causing headaches for each other all the way through this race but here is Nico as they say in the chat going for the win now he had his his eyes set on second but with that extra penalty for Nam this is huge absolutely huge for the race uh, Nico seven lap old mediums only half the life of the Alpha Tauri uh, mediums in front of him uh, they're both draining the battery now that is great defense again from Duncan and he still has more work to do. His engineer will be encouraging. There's a nice switchback move coming from Nico down. Takes uh, first position through turn two. But he's still then going to have to defend um, the long trip down towards turn three. Straight across to the left-hand side of the racetrack. He goes to try and break the toe as much as possible. Holds the inside line. Breaks in a diagonal line to the outside. And just holds on. Does Nico. He's got... Very little by the way of uh, electrical boost left. It is just over six seconds and we've got three laps remaining of the race. I wonder how much battery uh, Nam has got left, but I know that the engineer is listening to the stream and I don't want to give anything away, but we know that Nico is on on the dregs of his battery now because the red light is flashing on the back of the uh, back of the car. That was adventurous from Duncan over the um, over turn seven, that one. Uh, surely picked up a warning for uh, going four wheels over the apex of the car of the uh, of the turn seven curb uh, lucas though now that duncan has ended up giving up that uh, second position nico is off in pursuit look at this six tenths of a second he's just gained on nam without the use of any battery uh, as uh, the Alpha Tauri in front of lucas waggles its front left in the air going across the uh, turn 15 curb that was rough coming off turn uh, 16 for, for uh, Duncan as well. Looks like he's struggling. Paul Power has retired. Paul Power has retired from the race. We've got another retirement with three laps to go. Will we see another caution period? Will we see Nico on the uh, hunt for the win here? What will happen to Team EXT as a result? Let's have a quick look at uh, where uh, Paul Power went wrong. I can't see him, so I'm going to go back to the battle that was happening between Duncan and Lucas overtook Duncan. Lucas managed with the use of DRS to overtake Duncan into third position now, chasing down Nico. His gap to... <laughs> Nordic Ninja is desperate for this safety car uh, as Paul Power's full-on retirement has now ticked us over to what I believe to be too late for any further safety car uh, through here. So Duncan now trying to hold on to a good points finish at the end of this one as Nam is only five seconds in the lead and he has a six second penalty. Let me leave that on screen now. We know that Nico is on the best tyres of the bunch uh, to close out this race. We know that Oni uh, probably isn't uh, going to be able to lift himself any further up the grid. Lucas is in third. The Sol Williams left because Paul Parra just retired. So has Thomas Leo, Wizard and Carujo. We have 14 runners. We have two laps to go. Nico is definitely on target here to try and get through. <laughs> Ninja says if he was leading the safety car, definitely would have come out that time. <laughs> you definitely, uh, definitely in a bit of a um, glass half empty kind of mindset tonight, Ninja. Uh, Vita is uh, eight tenths of a second away. We still have a, a strong battle here for the final podium position, but it does look like it's going to be Nam and Nico on the top two steps at, at right now. Uh, I think Lucas probably doesn't have the pace or the uh, tools at his disposal, the ERS or the DRS, to stay close enough to Nico here to uh, move himself forward. It looks like Duncan has some DRS, though. Duncan going for it on the beautiful helicopter cam down to the inside. Secures P3 once again for uh, EXT with uh, two complete laps to go. And uh, Ninja asking Nam to slow down. I think Nam is going to be doing his level best to uh, have some pace at the end of the race and extend that gap out again. He knows what he's got to do. Nico, there might be a chance Nico won't know uh, what he needs to do but uh, I fully expect the engineers to be telling him it's a six second gap he needs to stay within and try and keep it tight here is Duncan in third Lucas hot on the heels almost it was almost an eight wheel car coming through that corner uh, with uh, with Duncan and Lucas 
paired so closely together. Got to be careful not to get too close. New fastest lap from Pablo, uh, who I'm assuming has just put on soft tyres down in 14th. I don't think that'll net him any points, though, down there. Uh, as you can see, the uh, Williams getting very, very uh, uh, mucky, having been offline several times in the race. Uh, and we've got Vita into P5. And he's uh, chasing down as well. We've got Rambo uh, in this group as well. Uh, Rambo will struggle, I think, because he'll be the one at the end of the DRS train. Uh, and we're into lap uh, 25, I think, for the leader now. If people would just stop chatting for just a moment, I would still be able to see the, the track map. <laughs> but we're about to enter the, the last lap, I think. With um, with Nam in the lead by 3.8 seconds only, with Nico in second by four seconds. So he is very much on uh, on with a good chance here of securing the win. Here, then, you can see the difficulty that Vita has got trying to pass the Williams without the use of ERS on this. Now the final lap of the Azerbaijan Azerbaijan uh, Baku Grand Prix. Here, round six of the F2 PS Championship at uh, the Esport Masters League. And it has been absolute scenes today. We've had a fantastic time watching these drivers. Those of us who are not allied to, um, to teams that have gone backwards, but uh, uh, unfortunately. But Nam uh, leads the race on the road, but he has that, uh, that, that penalty as well. So don't... Uh, don't, uh, don't believe for a moment that Nico isn't going to be pushing... Uh, like crazy to try and secure this win. Who will triumph for the third position in the race at the moment? Anyone could drop it at any point, though. Don't forget, um, we've already seen drivers make unforced errors tonight. So anybody could uh, stick it in the barrier and upset the order of the race. We are heading out of towards the end of sector two. It's 3.3 seconds. The gap, it needs to be six plus in order for EXT to hold on to the uh, to the win but it looks like heading down towards uh, the final uh, breaking point of the lap comes Nam and uh, shortly behind him only 3.1 seconds away comes Nico here they go stretching for the line then to the end just a couple of corners to deal with just a couple of steering inputs no braking needed down here as Nam will know his fate already he'll know he'll only pick up second position he will uh, head down past the pit lane entry uh, here is the start finish line. Nam crosses the road first, but the win will go to the championship leaders. LDL driven by Nico behind them. Here comes EXT's Duncan for a great uh, performance for the team. Second and third, then Lucas and Vita. Rambo takes home sixth. It looks like Boyer finishes in seventh. Good points for GT10 tonight. And LRN, good performance from Jerome picking up uh, eighth place. Only managed to rescue his race only to the point of ninth. And then the final uh, Position in the top 10 goes to the way of Gaitans. Romsko is messing around, but he finished 11th. Kasper is in uh, 12th, and he finished uh, down there. Pablo did pick up the final pay, uh, points position. Marcus leapfrogged Kasper for 12th, and uh, Pablo, I think it was, at the bottom of the grid. Only then, uh, sorry, Nico for the LVL team, managing to complete uh, a tremendous uh, driver of the day winning performance for the team. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be for only today, but they still put up a great fight. Uh, fantastic race for us. Here is then uh, uh, Nico flying the flag. Uh, and thanks to Nico as well for hosting tonight. Uh, it's uh, an extra little bit for um, uh, extra bit of effort for him. So uh, grateful to, uh, to him for, for doing that for us. Great to see the podium. Uh, you get your uh, GGs and congratulations in on the chat now while uh, while we're still live and we'll take you through the final standings shortly. But a good performance from EXT who may have uh, expected to try and take a 1-2. Instead, it's only slightly worse. It's a 2-3 for the EXT team. So there we have it. Con confirmation, provisional results, of course, is for LDL to win for Nico from Nam and Duncan on the podium. Uh, great performance all round uh, and uh, 48 and a half minute race time today. Then comes Lucas in fourth position, uh, Vita in fifth. We've got Rambo in sixth place, Boyer securing seventh, Jerome in eighth. Oni managed to recover his position back to ninth. Uh, shout out really there for Jerome for a great climb from 13th on the grid. Guy Tance in 10th. Then comes Rumsko, Marcus, Casper, uh, 
Pablo with the fastest lap, and then our retirees were Paul Parra, Caruso, Thomas Leo, and Wizard. Well, that is it for round six. Uh, obviously, F1 is on right now on this very same channel, so switch across to them when you're done. Give us a like and a subscribe on your way out. That would be absolutely awesome. My name is Webbo. You can find me at Webbo Red 5 uh, um, in most everywhere. Um, but until this time next week, uh, we will uh, we will look forward to hearing from you. We will give you, obviously, the finalised results and the championship standings at the start of the coverage next week. Hopefully talk to a new, a new uh, team manager as well. But from me, Webbo, from everybody here at the Esports Masters League, with thanks to League Racing TV, we will catch you on the next race day. <laughs>